The shilling's weakness is partly resultant on the U.S. economic action of increasing interest rates, tightening its monetary policy, and also due to the weak euro, where the European Union is doing the opposite. In that scenario, the IMF has made its policy recommendations. We don't know what the future is going to entail, and for that emerging markets need to be prepared. And these economies are caught in global cross-currents, they are confronting domestic vulnerabilities, and the challenge is to preserve stability. Our policy recommendation includes a package of demand support policies that is tailored to specific situations. And that demand package policy includes, of course, monetary policy and accommodative monetary policy where it's needed, tightening of monetary policy where it's possible, and smart fiscal policies adjusted to country specificities. But for the developing nations group, the developed nations cannot take action as though they were alone in the world. And yet, that is what they're doing. In the meeting we, have, we had, for example, with the World Bank, it is, we are actually pushing that forward. So we say, okay, what, uh, what can be done to the, you know, the big guys to help the, the emerging economy? Because those tensions between uh, Europe and USA have an impact on us innocently. So what can, what can be done by the World Bank and the IMF really to start the, uh, having an interface between, uh, between the, uh, the big economies. Does the EU or the US care about the consequences of their self-preservation on the rest of the developing world? Can the IMF rein in on these two giants? Nothing so far suggests that. Some of the Tumba interview at the IMF in Washington, they say.